This is a short video in which I'm going to show you how you can deal with missing data in R. There's lots of different methods that you could use to deal with missing data. So if you go online and Google it, you'll probably find many other methods other than the ones I'm going to show you today. But here's just some real basic ones that you can do using base R. I'm going to cover how to get rid of any row of data with missing data, how to do it conditionally based on certain columns or multiple columns, and as well, how you can substitute missing data. So the first thing we're going to do is just create some data. We're going to make a data frame with three scores. And as you can see, there's some missing data in them all. So if we run this in now, then we can view it. As you can see, a couple of missing data points for score one, a couple for score two, one for score three. I'll show you how we can deal with these missing data points. You'll note if you ask for a mean for, let's say, score one with this, it'll give us an A. It won't give us a mean. Now, if you just want to get a mean of a column that contains some missing data, what we can ask for is the mean. We'll then type that na.rm equals true. Now, if we do that, it's computing our mean to allow us to discount the fact we've got the missing data points to compute our mean for us. Now, of course, you probably want to do a little bit more with data and just compute a mean. So there's certain things that we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some new data frames based on different ways I'm going to get rid of the missing data. That way I'll be able to show you direct comparisons between our original data frame and the new one I'm creating. The first thing we could do is we could just use na emit df1. And basically our new data frame I'm going to make is going to be data frame one with anyone with any missing data deleted from it altogether. If we run that, then we view data frame two. You can see it's a much smaller one now. That's because it's got rid of that person, this person, this person, and this person, because they all had some missing data. So as you can see there, we've got rid of anyone with the missing data points. So that would be our complete case data set. And we can run that. And now it will give us a mean for M score one. It's not going to be the same mean score, that's simply because we got rid of some people who did have a score for score one. So for example, in this new one, person number nine has been deleted, though they did have a score for score one. So that's why it's not the same mean. Because we got rid of extra data because we got rid of people who are missing for score two and three as well, because we used any emit for the entire data frame. We got rid of anyone who has any missing data in any columns whatsoever. So what we could do instead, we could emit a row of data of our participants if they have one specific column missing. So if they have one data point in one specific column. For example, here, I'm going to create a new data frame. I'm going to use this command here. And what this is going to do is delete anybody with missing data for score two. So if we run this, then we view that. Now you can see score two is complete cases. And now we still have people with missing data for score one and missing data for score three. So we've just got rid of anybody who was missing data in score two. So we basically got rid of participant one and participant three. What we could do though, we could say, I only want to get rid of participants if they have missing data for two columns. And you could do it for more if you wanted. So what I'm saying here is, I only want, I want you to get rid of participants if they have missing data for score one and missing data for score two. So this means they, both of these conditions need to be met. So our participants have to be missing data for score one, score two. So essentially, if you look back at our original data frame, they should only get rid of participant three because they're the only person with missing data in those two columns. So if we run that and we create our data frame four, there we go. And you can see we've lost participant three now. These are still all here because they did have scores in either. In this case, I have score one. In this case, I have score two. Now we could say, 
I only want to get rid of participants if either of these two are missing. So instead of saying they both have to be there, I'm going to say if either of these are missing. So what I say here is, is the same as before, but with and, which is a little bit confusing given this is the one which says they both need to be missing. You may assume that oh, and means both of those things together need to be in place, but it's not. We're just simply saying in this case that if that's missing or that's missing, then we get rid of those participants. So let's see, we run this and we get data frame number five. There we go. So now we got rid of any one with missing data from score one or they had missing data from score two. And we still keep this person here because they had missing data from score three, but we didn't put that in our list of reasons to get rid of people. Final thing I'll quickly show you. There is a possibility that, well, in fact, you want missing data to be zero or, or any other value. Assume zero. So you want missing data, oh, well, actually, that's a, just a zero. So if you want to do that, you could do it for a single score. So, for example, is if I say for score one, if they've got missing data, it actually should have been a zero. So what I say is DF1 score one, if it's missing, I want to impute that to be a zero. So what this should do is it should put zero in there and there. No. Now we've imputed them to be a zero. Of course, we don't have to do a column. We could just say, well, maybe if you get any zeros in your data frame, then we want them to be zero. And we just say DF1 is NA DF1 zero. So we run that now and that will now you see the zeros have appeared for any missing data whatsoever. That's just a brief run through of some ways of dealing with missing data. As I say, there's lots of different things that you can do. There's lots of um, packages that allow you to deal with missing data in different ways, but this is quite a simple starting point that's relatively efficient in dealing with problems that you have. As ever, the code for this is linked below the video.